All right, so after seeing all the interest of everybody in the trailer, I decided I'm finally gonna make a video going through the whole trailer, um, kind of describing how everything works, showing what I got, helping anybody out that's uh, trying to build one as well. And um, go through some of the things I've learned. This is my second trailer that I built for myself. Um, I'm gonna go through some of the things I learned on the first one. Some of the options I would order um, if you're gonna buy a trailer new, which honestly I suggest it. By the time you find a used one, usually they're not that much cheaper. You have no idea what they did to it, what they put in it. And sometimes it's just better off starting with exactly what you need. You could move doors around, you know, get the axles you want, get the exact finish you want, move stuff around on the inside. Get different kind of options that, in my personal opinion, would just be too expensive or too hard to try to do on your own after the trader is, uh, after you have the trade in your possession. So this is probably gonna be a pretty long video, you know, between going over everything, what I've learned and how to order, what I got, starting on the exterior, we'll move into the interior, show you how the beds work, uh, show you some of the plumbing, what we used to cook, what we use for outside. This trailer, we go to some race events, a lot of four-wheeler events, um, some tracks, um, go to Fort Wilderness with the family just to relax. So this trailer, we do kind of a lot with it and it's been good to us. So let's get started. I'll set up on the inside and we'll go over some of the stuff I've learned. So the first trailer we had for about two or three years, I first built that trailer for a lot of, I guess, non-hookup camping and then realized we kind of did a mixture of 50-50 and it was a real pain in the butt when you get somewhere with hookup. You're still camping like if there is no hookup and I just wanted to build this trailer a little different. So some of the things we learned on the first trailer I had a gas water heater one of those portable ones outside and I'd feed the hot water in from the outside. Uh, that water heater was not very great. In Georgia it was about 30 degrees one time I'm taking a shower Wind blew by, turned the gas off, and now stuck with a cold shower the rest of the way, and the water was freezing. Had to go outside, try to make it start again. I don't know, maybe I just had bad luck with that one. But uh, ever since I switched to the electric water heater, the seven gallon, I've never had a problem ever again. I'll show you guys that later when we do a walk around. Another thing I learned, those little portable AC units that you see that roll around and stuff like that, not good if you live in a hot environment. Uh, anything past about 85 degrees, it'll make the trailer a little bit comfortable, but it wouldn't make it cool. And at night, it'll take um, probably about an hour or two to cool the trailer down. And uh, no heat, which kind of sucked. And it was really, really, really noisy. I, I can't sleep with that noise. Same goes for roof ACs. Um, like in a regular trailer, my dad has a regular RV. We had a regular RV before the last one we had. And the noise in a roof unit I just can't sleep with it. They're super inefficient. There was no way I was gonna be able to run the size of the roof unit I needed for the trailer and run anything else with a 3500 Predator generator that I run when we uh, go out camping with no power. And with the mini split, I never have any problems. I could run about the mini split pretty much everything. I just cannot run another major appliance like the electric stove, microwave, or the water heater. I would have to shut the AC off. I can leave it blowing, but I gotta shut the compressor off to be able to use any of those big major appliances. <clears throat> um, another thing, we needed a larger shower. The first trader we built, we had a 32 by 32 or a 30 by 30. Taking a shower in it was miserable. You know, it was just tight. You touch a curtain all the time. I just couldn't stand it. I wanted something way nicer in this trader. I first started with a 32 by 42, I believe, and then realized when I put it all in there that I really wasn't losing anything by going with a 60 inch shower. So I ended up going with a 60 inch shower and I'll show you some of that there. Some of the stuff I went through with the drain uh, issues. Uh, every time I needed to put a drain, when I would drill a hole, the frame will be there. So what I ended up doing was making everything on like a subfloor, which ended up working better, I think, because I didn't have to drill any holes through the bottom of the frame to run the, the drains. So all the drains and everything is ran through the subfloor to underneath the sink, which we'll go over later. Another big thing for us was making it easier to set up. Uh, sometimes the weather's not on your side. You can leave on a great day, 
great weather and you could get to wherever you're going and it's really crappy. There was one time we made it to Sebring and when we got there, it was pouring rain and there was no way of sleeping without getting the car out and setting the whole trailer up. And in uh, that trailer, we didn't have the lifting bed. We kind of had the E-Track set up with two by fours and a removable mattress and this and that. So the mattress has to go on top of the car because there's nowhere to put it. And when you get somewhere and it's pouring rain and now you got to take all this stuff out and you're trying not to get stuff wet. I don't know, I think it takes longer and I probably got more wet than if I would have just done it normal. But that's why we definitely, I would definitely recommend the lifting bed. Much faster to set up. I mean, just everything's better about it. I tried kind of pricing things out, trying to invent something so I could save money. And honestly, I just don't think you're gonna save much by the time you order everything, make everything. And it's definitely not gonna look as nice and it's probably not gonna work as good. So just spend the money if, if you're looking for a lifting bed and buy a happy jack. Some problems I had with my other trader were the height but how it was only 20 foot, it really didn't affect it. On this trailer, however, the first time we went out in it, I'm pulling out of a Walmart and the back corner gets stuck. So I had to back up and kind of do a crazy angle leaving the Walmart. And on the way to my friend's property, I had to make a U-turn because I passed it. And I mean, I must do very little grade difference, this and that, back corner got stuck again. So after that trip, I, I gotta do something to get this trailer higher. Because when they're so long, from the wheel to the back of the trailer, I believe it's probably like 8 or 10 feet. So it just, I guess, sags so much back there when you start changing the angle of the front, the back really goes down. And if that's still on any kind of ramp or something like that, it's going to hit. So I'll show you guys later what we did to make the trailer higher. Um, and another thing talking about the height and stuff like that, the tires your trailer comes with. Unless you specifically tell them you want a specific brand of tire, the tire that they're going to put on the trader are going to be absolute trash. They're going to be some super cheap Chinese thing you've never heard of. I highly recommend to throw those tires away, get new tires, get light truck tires, something like that. Maybe try getting a bigger tire if you can, if your trader allows it. And another thing, make sure that when you get your trader, Whatever your trader is rated for, make sure the tires are rated for it. This is one problem I have with Synergy. Um, the trader was supposed to have a 10,500 pound capacity. And when I looked at the tires and I added them all up, I only had about 10,100 pounds of capacity. So they kind of undershot on the tires there a little bit. I fought with them back and forth. They said they're gonna send somebody. They never send anybody. So that's just one thing I would recommend to check if you're buying a new trader. Just look at the tires and make sure everything's what it's supposed to be. Another thing we really learned on the other trailer, uh, one night in Fort Wilderness, it was pouring rain, nasty storm, probably one of the nastiest storms we've ever been in in the trailer. Um, it was dinner time and we had nowhere to eat. I think we sat on the floor and like ate on a chair or something like that. Our other trailer was set up much different than this one, so it didn't have like a little sofa area that we could sit down. My son had a little foldable bed. So we're just literally sitting on the floor, eating dinner. It was just sad and I'm like, man, I'd never want to do this ever again. So we made a little foldable eating area. We never really use it because we have yet to be caught in a storm. Um, sometimes my son used it to do his e-learning if he went on vacation when he was still doing school. Or if he wants to watch a different movie than we're watching, sometimes we'll set it up on the table or sometimes he'll just watch it on his bed in a little portable DVD player. And that same time in Fort Wilderness is the reason I learned to get the extended roof. Uh, in the middle of the night, I heard water trickling. And I'm like, man, that water sounds close. And again, we sleep right at the door. Was, the bed was in the same location as this trader. And I see just water pouring down the door. And I guess the nose was down just a little bit. So some of the water that was pouring around the back of the roof was going right through the seal. And it was pouring down the door. That's why I highly, highly recommend that uh, extended roof. Not all the trader manufacturers do it. It's a little bit of an expensive option. I believe it was about 400 bucks. But to me, it's worth it. It comes with three lights in it, which is nice for loading and unloading at night. It's nice to have them on at night. It gives you nice accent lighting. Storage for clothes and food and stuff like that was another shortage we had on the old one. On the old trailer, our bed was a little bit higher. So what we did, we'll leave our suitcases and stuff underneath the bed. When we needed something, we'll pull the suitcase out, grab whatever clothes we needed, put the suitcase back. We had a bag down there where we throw the dirty clothes. I mean, it, 
it worked, but it just, I wanted this trader, I just wanted everything to be better. So I got this um, wardrobe. Most of it's where we put our clothes. Um, the bottom drawer, or the middle drawer is where we would put our underwears and stuff like that. And then the bottom drawer, we have it set up with utensils, um, barbecue, burger flippers, tongs, stuff like that. Some different, you know, uh, stuff to use. Also on the first trailer, the electrical setup was very, very, very basic. I had um, one of those plugs that you'd make a hole and it's kind of like an outlet and then it came in and had two outlets. And I put a circuit breaker, GFI as the protection and I just kind of ran kind of outlets everywhere uh, with kind of extension cords if that makes any sense. And for battery charging, I just bought a battery maintainer, connected it to one of those outlets and that's how I charge the battery. So on this trailer, I wanted to make sure to have a little bit safer, better setup. So I went with the WFCO uh, 30 amp um, distribution center. I love it. It gives you a good amount of circuits for your 110s. Gives you 12 volt circuits. Gives you the charger. It's a nice clean setup. It wasn't that expensive. I'll probably put a link in the description of which one I used. But I highly recommend that instead of all those other plugs I've seen. And I've seen many people ask on the forums about have you used this, have you, just guys put a lifeline on the trailer so you don't have to be worrying about extension cords and all this, just try to do it right, you know, spend a little bit more time, a little bit more money, and I guarantee you, you'll be happier in the long run. Also, when you get a two foot V nose and you do not get an extended tongue, if you have to do any kind of sharp turning or backing up, something like that, the trailer gets really, really close to the back of the truck and the back bumper. You gotta really pay attention to what you're doing I highly recommend if you don't get the extended nose, which I really recommend, at least spend a little bit extra money and get the extended tongue. Gives you a little bit more space. You can mount a battery up there if you do that. You can mount a storage box. It gives you a little bit more options. You can mount a mini split up there if you wanted to. So if you don't get the extended V nose, I recommend at least getting the extended tongue. Another thing I highly, highly recommend, do not build a trader without insulation. My first trader I did that. I learned my lesson, you know, we were in South Florida, I would have thought I'd never been cold and this and that. Well, I went to Georgia for New Year's and it was 20 to 30 degrees at night and I had two portable little heaters and they did nothing. We froze our butts off, it was about 40 or 50 degrees in the trailer when it was 20 or 30 degrees outside. So I highly recommend insulation and I highly recommend to just get it ins uh, insulated from the dealer you're purchasing it from. They're gonna finish it off a lot better. You don't have to worry about taking the wood off, what's gonna break. Uh, I know some manufacturers, they use like some nails. I don't know how they work, but you're never gonna get those back in. So now you gotta figure out how to put screws back in. I highly recommend getting the insulation, getting the roof finished by the manufacturer. I really believe they're gonna do a much better job than something you're gonna do. Remember, these people do this every day, day in, day out. You know, so it, I insulated my roof on the first one and it did not look as good as this one. The spare tire storage. Another thing I really learned on my first trader. On my first trader, I can't tell you how many times halfway to the destination, I go, oh crap, I left the spare at home. Because the only place to put it was the back of the truck or somewhere in the trader. But you have to put everything in the trader first and find out where you have space. Most of the time I just put it in the back of the truck and I left it a lot. I mean, I, I'm telling you, I can't count how many times I've left a spare and then the whole trip, you're just panicking. Oh my God, if I get a flat, oh my God, if I get a flat, sometimes I'll turn around and go pick it up. I highly recommend having a designated storage, which is right over here, I'll show you later on, to keep that spare tire. You could keep nuts, a little bit of tools in there, maybe a bottle jack. It's, it's pretty nice to have. And, um, the other thing I recommend is outdoor storage. I just added it to the trader actually about two weeks ago. Before I was keeping my hoses and stuff inside of the box where the AC is right here. And it just wasn't cutting it. There's so much stuff in there. If it didn't go in the same way it came out, it didn't go back in. So I just added a small box from Harbor Freight. It's been working pretty good so far. I was able to get my sewer hoses in there, which is exactly what I wanted to get in there. And uh, it's working pretty good. I might be adding a second one, I'm not sure. But I'll show you guys that later when we do the walk around on the outside. 
Another thing we learned on the old trailer, which is actually a positive, is our water tanks being external has worked for us. I do not have a built-in water tank on this trailer either. Um, the times we go to a place that does not have water, I have some 15 gallon jugs from Harbor Freight that they're for sprayers. They come with a pump. I highly recommend if you do that, upgrading the pump to an actual RV pump. But I have two of them, so that's a total of 30 gallons. I have another jug that's another 15 gallons. And I'll show you the jugs I have to hold my roof on the outside. That's about another eight gallons of water that they hold also. So it's a little bit more water. I have a portable 15 gallon um, gray water tote. So if you're ever in anywhere that you can't just dump it on the ground, I don't have any black water. So the only thing I'm dumping on the ground is gray water. So if you're in somewhere where you don't want to dump the water on the ground, you could dump it in that tote and then take it somewhere where you could dump it on the ground. Um, black water, the only black water I have is in the toilet. And I decided also what worked for me on the old trader was just having a portable toilet. Uh, most of the time we go somewhere there's bathrooms. So you try to use the bathroom there, but if you had to, the option is in the trader and one way or another you're gonna have to touch poo poo water it's either in a portable toilet or in the hose on the side of the trailer and one of the last things i learned on the old trailer was i needed my refrigerator to stay on even if i didn't have power um for example the whole way traveling i wanted it to stay on i did not want to buy an rv one where i needed propane i do not have propane on this trailer i wanted it to be 100 electric and I wanted my refrigerator to stay on traveling. That way I could load the refrigerator up with food on the way up. I don't have to worry about anything getting bad. If I make it in time, if the fridge is still cold, taking a cooler, is the cooler leaking water? Um, the ice probably only lasts two or three days. So at the end of the day, then you gotta buy ice wherever you're at. Definitely wanted a way to keep the refrigerator on. And what I did, I have an inverter and I have a automatic transfer switch um, behind this refrigerator. I'll probably put a link in the description as far as which transfer switch I used. And the way it works, the second you take shore power off, and I have a button for the inverter on the side here. If the inverter is on, the second you take shore power off, the transfer switch is going to throw and it's going to run off the battery off the inverter. And the second you plug it back in, the transfer switch is going to throw back to your 110 um, supply. So it's pretty cool the way it works. And when you're not using it, you just turn the inverter off and it stays off. And um, that's pretty much it. Now I'll go over some of the options I would highly recommend to order your trader with if you're purchasing new. All right, so some of the options I would recommend when ordering a trader new. Um, one of the first options I recommend, get a generator door on the outside. They finish it really nice. And if you want to put the mini split where you don't see it, if you look at this trader from the outside, uh, besides the windows, you would never guess this is a conversion because there is absolutely nothing hanging on the outside that a regular enclosed trader what they have and even the windows blend at night because the windows are black and they're frameless so it's pretty sleek looking on the outside I definitely didn't want a mini split on the outside uh, didn't like the aesthetics of it and on this trainer with the extended vinos there really was nowhere to put it on the front anyways so pretty much um, underneath the refrigerator I build a box and in that box is where the mini split is you open the generator door and that's where the hot air expels from the outside unit uh, spare tire hatch, which is in the floor right here in front of the kitchen. Highly recommend. That's another great option. Have the spare in there. You never forget it. It's always there. Tools you need, the nuts you need. Everything is in that compartment when you need it. The last thing you want to be is scrambling when you get a flat. Where's this and where's that and the socket. I got lock nuts on the tires. Oh, where's the lock nut? Everything is, is in that compartment there. And there's a little bit of space. You could actually put more stuff in there if you needed to. Moving the side door. The side door, if you were not to move it and you just buy a regular trailer, I believe actually comes two feet forward of where it is right now, which would be exactly where the toilet is. So try to, before you order a trailer, configure what you want, configure how you want it, and figure out where you want your doors, where you want your generator door. I specifically said where I wanted that as well. And the one other thing I recommend, if you do get a spare tire compartment, tell them where you want it. Because you would think they would put the spare tire door in front of the door, and they didn't. They put it over there. So I lost a little bit of space in the bathroom and had to change a couple of little design things um, from the beginning, but it ended up working and I'm happy with it, so it's not really that big of a deal. 
get the extra height in the trader. I added the 12 inch height and it makes a world of a difference, especially with the happy jack bed. Um, my side by side goes under it perfectly fine. It's not lifted or anything, it's a stock height RZR. I still got two or three inches on it, but um, it does work good, it goes under there. The extra height does make it nice. Um, how we raise the shower floor, uh, that also helped in there. You know, you still have plenty of headroom when you get in the shower, even though the floor is raised six inches. The other thing I told the builders not to do was not to add a roof vent. I don't want any areas that could possibly leak. Um, I wasn't a fan of the roof vent on the first trailer. To me, it really doesn't do that big of a difference as far as keeping the trailer cool or not when you're not using it. So I just opted not to have it at all. One option I wouldn't recommend are torsion springs. The upcharge for torsion springs, in my opinion, wasn't worth it. I would buy the trailer with regular leaf springs and invest the money in the timber and suspension. The timber and suspension rides much better than the torsion leaf spring, uh, than the torsion axles and are fully rebuildable. If any part goes bad, you could order it. You could even have, they're all four of them are the same. So you could buy, you know, the a bushing kit and you have an extra bushing kit. The problem with torsions and, and this is why I didn't do it is let's say you ever have a torsion axle go bad or whatever, that rubber goes bad in the middle of a trip you know, what are the chances they're gonna have the exact axle you need somewhere close by, the exact width you need, then have to cut it off and this and that. I didn't wanna deal with any of that. Uh, so I did the timber and suspension, and to me it rides much better. I've read some reviews of people that have changed their torsion axles to the timber as well, and they say that it even rides even better. So I, I really recommend just getting the regular D springs and upgrading to the timber and suspension. And when we do the walk around, I'll show you and they also have different spindles, so you could adjust your height uh, to pretty much whatever you want. So it's actually a pretty cool system, works pretty good. Like I said earlier, the rear spoiler on the door, it's a great option, highly recommend it. To me, I wouldn't buy a trailer without it anymore. Um, definitely spend the money on the rear extension. The extended V-nose, like I also mentioned before, or at least the extended tongue. Like I mentioned before again, insulation get it done at the dealer. Um, saves you a bunch of time on your trader build. I really don't think it's gonna save you much money, maybe a couple hundred bucks. But to me, I think the finish that they're gonna give you is much better than a finish you're gonna be able to do. Unless you're a professional carpenter or something like that, which I'm not. And also when you get the insulation on the roof, the roof comes finished. So it's kind of like a two for one, but I'm sure they charge you for it. Uh, another kind of silly thing I think, but it makes the trader look much better, is the blackout package. Um, the blackout package in any color makes the trader just look so much more professional, so much nicer. You never have to worry about the aluminum dolling, which would happen in probably a year or two when it goes from that nice chrome to kind of like a dingy gray. The blackout package looks great on a white trader, looks great on a gray trader, looks great. I mean, I have yet to see a trader that the blackout package does not look good on, and I highly recommend it. And one option I do not recommend, and this is me, everybody has different preferences, is an awning. The cost of an awning, I could not justify it um, for what it does. You know, I could buy so many portable roofs for $1,000 and always have a new one, and have an awning, and then you have to worry about something on the side of the trader. And again, aesthetics, to me, it didn't look great on the side of the trader. You still gotta put them up if it's windy. So if it's windy, you gotta put up my portable one anyways. So I just highly recommend just staying with a portable tent. Again, if you really want an awning, get an awning. But to me, a portable tent works perfect for me. And uh, now we'll do a walk around on the trigger on the outside. I'll explain some things on the outside. We'll move our way on the inside. And then we'll go over some of the plumbing, how I made the lights, how the bed works. We'll go over everything. And whatever I don't cover, just leave a comment, leave a message, and I'll see if I can get another video to address all the things I missed. All right, let's do a walk around. All right, so here we are on the outside of the trailer. We'll start at the tongue. I added the electric jack. It also comes with a light. Highly recommend it. The jacket came with the trailer. I wanted to replace it the whole time. On my first trailer, we had one of these also. And I just never got around to it. We just kept using it. And it actually broke in like two months. So I had to, so change that out. This is a storage box I just put in here. This is the hose for the extent, uh, external tank holes for hookup and it came with a bunch of different connections so i kind of like this area you know i gotta 
keep all the sewer stuff in a separate area. It comes with a little lock key. And I built kind of that on the bottom just to help support it. It's pretty solid. It doesn't move. Uh, you can see the whole blackout package. The door with the window. I got the semi screwless exterior. And there you can see those three uh, LED lights I got up on the top. There's the side frame of this window. I got one of them cracked open. I paint matched the wheels to match the wheels on the dually. Uh, 3D printed those center caps. And I'll uh, see if I get a video or. And also another kind of cool thing is I ended up getting the same exact size tire as the spare on the dually. So, you know, it's always better to have more. So uh, if I get two flats for any odd reason, I could always pull the spare off the truck and get it installed here. Um, so it's just more options. Back of the trailer, the spoiler. Uh, at night, maybe I'll come out and get a video. I uh, installed underglow lighting here and one down here. Same ones that are on the truck. Here's the back door with the spoiler. Uh, another thing I'd recommend to do, which I haven't done yet, and as you can see, there's a little bit of damage. Those rubber bumpers that are there and there. I don't know if you can see them. There's the first one, the middle one, and the last one. Get the extended ones and then make the drop down ramp a little bit longer because you can see all those little dimples and stuff like that. That's from dropping the door in like a rocky grass area or something like that. And it scratches up the door. My other trailer was actually pretty paid up. The lights on the extended roof. The other side of the trailer. And the generator door with the mini split that I'll show you now. The trailer kind of came with this little system to hold the door. I really didn't like it because if it got windy or something like that and the door kind of flapped around, it would drop. Uh, there was one night where it did drop, but it was a cool night. So I guess the AC wasn't really running too much, so it didn't overheat or anything like that. So I added this system here that they set it on Amazon. It's like a little gas shock goes up and you just make kind of a little plate for it to bolt on the bottom I'll include a link in the description for it on Amazon and it's even adjustable here so like let's say it's really windy or something like that or it's raining and I don't want the door to be so high what you could do is you come over here flip this around it comes out and you drop it to right there now it's a little bit flatter so if it's raining, you know, less water will work its way in there. The only thing is now you can walk into it, so you just got to be careful. And put that back up and I'll show you the inside. Alright, so that's the outside mini split. That cable is just a solar panel that I have. Keeps the battery charged while it's parked here. And the solar panel also works great to keep the battery maintained during the day when the fridge is running. The wiring probably could look better, but it's really not too bad. That's the inverter there. And when you turn it on, it'll light up with the voltage. It has two USBs, which is kind of nice. That's the back of the power supply. A uh, uh, solar charge controller. Uh, neat thing about this, you uh, has like a little thing where you can turn the lights on. This really, this light really helps at night when you're trying to set up and stuff like that. If you, you get to a dark place. You can turn this light on, you can see all your hoses, your cable. I put a fire extinguisher. There's nothing wrong with it, it just looks old because it came off my boat and it was just faded and I didn't like the way it looked for the boat. So I bought new ones for the boat and put the old ones in here. Turn the light off. And then that charger will actually tell you how many amps you're charging, what your voltage is, and whatever that light is drawing. Here is an extension cord for the cable I have for the water tanks, which I'll show you in a little bit. The water hose from when we have hookup. This is 50 feet, 30 amp lifeline. And the last thing in here, I put a hole in there to get more air coming into the mini split. And that is where the battery is. 
So it'll be a little bit of a pain to get that battery out, but I did make sure that I came out without taking the AC unit out. I was gonna run the AC just to show you guys how quiet it is and stuff, but it's kind of a nice cool day. And that's pretty much it from the exterior. I'll uh, show you guys uh, the suspension now. All right, so here we are on the bottom of the trailer. There you can see the arms, each one's individual. And if you can see there in the front, that's one bushing in front of the arm. That's the rebound bushing. And then on top of the arm, it has a big rubber spring. And the spindle are adjustable. And then you could add these two by threes here to give it more strength if your trailer frame is strong enough you don't have to I just did it because I'd rather have more than less and here it is on this side see this is the rebound dampener that is a polyurethane bushing on the swivel point that is your rubber spring right here and these four bolts are what goes to your spindle that make it adjustable you can get those with a drop or raise or straight which I have a straight so that's pretty much System. As far as the water and sewer hookup, they're right here on the bottom of the trailer. There's the water hookup, the sewer hookup. You just reach down here right by the generator door and you'll feel them both. That is the bottom of the spare tire compartment. So when the trailer is not raised, that is pretty close to the ground. Your ground clearance. The box poly hangs down about another six inches from the side of the trailer. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. And there's the bottom of that grill. And that is the drain for the AC unit. All right, so this is some of the stuff that we use on the trailer all the time. Um, this blue toe here is what goes under the sink. I just took it out so you guys can see better the plumbing and stuff like that. But it's just some extra cups. I got some of my flags in there garbage bags, propane, tie wraps, you know, just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. I think I got a thing of screws in there. The white box is the box that the induction uh, cook stove goes in. The, that cardboard box, that is those little string lights. We hang them up on the, uh, on the roof. Highly recommend getting a blower and a vacuum, both battery power. They really help keeping the trailer clean, especially when you're, you know, putting um, side-by-sides or ATVs in and out and stuff like that. You're usually in a dusty environment. Got a backup light over here for the outside. Um, this roof is a 13 by 13, works great. Kind of a cool canopy looking roof. That box is the barbecue, I just used the box. Uh, got a broom, you need a broom, strap to strap everything down. This over here is what we use for the outside. And it's just like that fake grass from Home Depot and it actually makes the campsite look real nice, you know? It looks like you have nice green, green grass. Um, there we got a black table. I got a little step for my son to brush his teeth and to get stuff from the storage on the top of the refrigerator is pretty high so you can see. Just a little step just in case you ever need it. My wife actually bought these little organizers and we put them outside and stuff. This holds a paper towel and everything. You put all your seasonings for your barbecue and stuff like that. Take it outside. It keeps everything nice and organized on the table. These are the jugs that I was talking about for the roof. They got these straps here. And this groove so the foot actually goes in this groove the strap goes around the foot and you fill these up with water and they hold the tent really good for moving on a windy day and stuff like that and the last day you're gonna leave camp you know you got another eight gallons of water there you can take your last shower after you uh, break everything down for the night because we usually bring the tent down the night before we leave here we got the 15 gallon portable uh, tote I gotta admit this thing is is really a quality piece it comes with a bunch of accessories where you could hook it up to the to the truck hitch. You could take it to a dumping site if the site has a dumping site and stuff like that. It comes with all the accessories that connect it. it. Comes with a flush port. I mean, comes with some nice big wheels. Definitely worth the money in this. And uh, I'll include a link to the description. I'll include as many links as I can um, to all the parts I've used. Those are the chairs. We got some folding chairs. Here's the sprayer tank from Harbor Freight. Pretty much you just take the sprayer end off, get yourself a barb fitting and a hose adapter. And now this will screw directly into the bottom of the trailer and upgrade the pump um, to an RV water pump. It gives you a lot better water flow. 
those are the part numbers there i'll see if i can find the link to it and just put it in there and so that's pretty much all the stuff that we use while we're camping and uh now we'll take a walk in the inside so we'll start in the bathroom and we'll work our way back Turn the light on So that is the shower, full size shower. It has all little shelves and stuff for the shampoo and stuff like that. And we also put one of those just to hold the soaps while we're moving, because there they fall off. The other thing I recommend is to get a removable shower head. That way you get the water where you want it and not have to wait till it gets there. So just, you know, try to save water as much as you can, especially when you got such limited water. You'll be surprised how much water you use taking a shower. This is the light switch here. I had a 3D print these uh, bases to bring out the switch because the switch goes probably about an inch back. And then you got your spade connections and all that stuff back there. So it was hitting the back wall. And I also did it for the main switch I'll show you now. We got our towel racks, holding all our towels. We got a little garbage can. We also have a little hamper we put in this area here. So all the dirty clothes stays in here. And that is our portable toilet. It's actually one of the nicest portable toilets. Really looks like a, a regular nice toilet. It has indicators for full, it has electric flush, and it has a thing on the side to hold toilet paper and everything. Let's see if you can see it. There it is. And just a nice looking oval toilet. The electric flush. Here I made a little storage up top for all your toiletries. I got wipes in here. Put the deodorants and the shampoos and stuff like that. Some more stuff up there, maybe extra toilet paper. We'll work our way in the kitchen. Also put a mirror on the door, that way you can see yourself, you know, when you get dressed or whatever, for any reason you need to look in a mirror. There's a couple times in the old trailer that we kind of needed one. So here's the kitchen. I made a storage here. Holds our rice cooker, salt, toaster, you know, stuff to cook with, paper towels. We got storage up here. Pots and pans, some Advil, bowls. And all of these doors, I made them all. Um, the border is made with MDF, and then the center is made out of the same wall paneling. You can see kind of an idea there with pocket screws and wood glue. And I hinged it and then here these are just stapled I, I used a router and I put like a half inch bevel in the back of it and stapled the paneling to the MDF on the back side they're all done the same way pocket screws to hold everything tight and then I would router the edges staple it and then I'll cock it and I have the magnetic door holders to hold everything down these kind of hold themselves down they got gravity on their side I put this stick on um, backsplash it actually looks really really nice it really matches the countertops pretty well let me turn the light on this is a little whirlpool microwave it fits really good in like tight little areas it's kind of like for apartments and stuff like that it's a little bit expensive, but it works great for a trailer, and it looks nice. The countertop, I did the epoxy pour countertop, and I gotta say, I, I really outdid myself, I think. This thing looks awesome. It looks really cool. You can see under here. I mean, you can just get as creative as you want to get, and do whatever color it is you want. Nice, deep stainless sink. Little chrome faucet. Uh, came with the sink. Came with this. Came with that uh, rack on the bottom. As far as cooking anything on stove top, we got this induction cooktop. We usually store it underneath the sink, but I just put it there so you guys could see what we used to cook with. And we could cook with it here. And we got an outlet right there. There's the light switch for the kitchen lights, which are these little LED strips, and they're like in a track. I made all these lights also. That's the side of the refrigerator there. We put these little magnetic pieces. 
to hold the keys and they work really nice you hang the truck keys the side-by-side -side keys and all that stuff up there and here we got the storage underneath the sink all of these doors are made the same way there is the seven gallon uh, Bosch water heater they look nice they're nice compact design I use all PEX um, pressure lines here you can see the PVC drain so pretty much the sink goes right from here down to there that's where the shower uh, drain comes in and right there on the other side on the floor is gonna be where you saw the outside sewer connection and I 3d printed this little piece here to hold that pipe away from the wall and nice and tight oh another thing I forgot to show you in the bathroom was the subfloor of the shower So there you can see, this is a two by six. I believe there's four rows of two by six. And I just finished the side of it with some nice tile. It actually looks pretty good. So I was able to put, you know, the 90 to the drain and then just run the piping to where you just saw under the sink. I finished the back of the box of the AC or utility hole, as I would call it. Um, with some of this gloss white paneling from Home Depot. I believe it's the same stuff that teachers use for like dry erase markers. It looks nice, it's gloss white, matches the refrigerator. You know, I got the kind of white and chrome theme going. Here is the box. I wish it would have been white, but the electrical panel and stuff like that. You got your 12 volt circuits on the right, your 110s on the left. And another thing I'd kind of recommend is maybe using a pencil uh, when you're first marking everything because I I messed up all right next we'll move on to over here we got a little shoe rack that my wife got it kind of keeps everything nice and organized you could she has rain boots and stuff when we're riding holds all the crocs and the shoes here's the main light switch again we had a 3d print a piece to bring the switches out here we got cigarette lighter here we got USBs, the light switches for the inside, this one's for the outside lights, and this one's just an extra one for right now. Here we have, this is the only piece of furniture that I bought, a full wood wardrobe. We got it from Wayfair, I believe it was, and it's actually really nice inside. I just figured this looks good, it wasn't terribly expensive. It was all real wood. Comes with a nice rod. It's so much nicer to being able to organize your clothes when you leave your house and you never have to organize it ever again. Everything's just right here, ready to go. You don't have to worry about suitcases or nothing like that. So we hang the clothes there. You got a little shelf there, a little shelf there. You can hang stuff. And down here you can put your underwears, maybe some shorts, something like that. And then here we have more utensils and cooking stuff, some sunblock, just kind of like an everything drawer. Got a little carpet here, I'll show you guys the spare tire compartment. Kind of interferes with that door stop. But there's a spare tire, same rim, same tire. I put a, like a rubber foam down on the bottom so it won't scratch anything. And in that box, is where there's extra lug nuts, the keys in there, everything we need to change the tire is gonna be in there. All right, I'm gonna need two hands to hold. All right, let's keep moving on the trailer. Over here, we got our little dinner table area with the window and the upper mini split, or the inside unit of the mini split. Here's how the windows work. They just kind of like crack open, you just spin these closed open you're not gonna get crazy airflow but they work uh, another thing I did here was this lower section here I made it removable it has four screws and it has a gasket on the inside because if you ever needed a service to AC all the service valves and stuff like that on this side or if for any reason you got to redo some of the electrical or something like that you could take this panel off with four screws it comes right out 
here we have the fold down dining table. This was the first epoxy pour I did. And it didn't come out as cool as the other one. But you know, every time you do it, you kind of learn a little bit more. I got more comfortable with how long you could work it. I didn't think you could work it for so long. I used a stone coat countertops epoxy. And I mean, you could play with that stuff for almost an hour to get you know exactly what you want. I'll show you here the chairs we got. I'll set these up real quick. So that's where the chairs all set up. You know, it's kind of nice. You got the window. You could be eating, looking outside the window. Whatever, if you want to get out of the sun for a while and be in the AC or bad weather. You know, it's a little bit tight for the three of us, but the three of us can't eat there. And I'll show you. I 3D printed these here, and they actually hold the chairs really nice. They hold them separated so they're not going to bang into each other when you're done using them. Fold them down and away, and they're out of the way. These are little brackets that you can buy on Amazon. Little, just for the fold down table. Same concept that the dining room table has. This strap here is what I hold the bed with, uh, hold it in the up position. I got these little U, U straps. And you just kind of go around the bed when it's up. Put it on this side and tighten it. Maybe at the end I'll show you a video of how everything looks when it's all up. And that is my son's bed slash couch. Sometimes we just, all three of us sit here and watch TV and he sleeps there. And you put all the pillows on the, on the countertop, fold the bed up and everything's allowed to come inside. Here we got the TV, we got a DVD player. That's a nice wall mount unit. I, didn't, I wanted something that was gonna be sleek. I didn't wanna put any shelves or anything. And the TV's on a swivel. So you can undo the latch then bring the TV out, you know, and angle it more to the bed or wherever you want. And it'll actually go pretty far. You just gotta be really careful with all the wiring and stuff. It's kind of a pain, but it works. And when you put it back, just make sure it latches because you don't want that moving around while you're driving. Here's how the bed is up. And uh, open, go open the back gate and bring it down. All right, I got the back gate down. You see the aluminum diamond plate we did here. The only downside kind of about this aluminum diamond plate is it does add a little bit of weight to the door. So I'm gonna have to tighten the springs up there a little bit. And this is another thing I was telling you. Look how nice they finish all that to hide the, uh, the spring and the shaft that helps uh, assist the door up. There's a little module and all the wiring for the happy jack bed. Here we got the bed lift button and the light switch for the outside. So let's bring the bed down. When you put the bed up, another thing to mention, we usually put the pillows up there on top of the wardrobe because it won't go all the way to the roof with the, the bed up or with the pillows on the bed. There, that's all the way down. You still have some space um, for some other stuff. If you want to put stuff under the bed, it'd be kind of hidden. What I like about this Happy Jack, we actually got really lucky. Right when I was about to place the order, uh, I searched on offer up and I found some people that were converting an RV into some kind of animal transport. So they bought a brand new RV and sold this Happy Jack uh, with the bed frame and everything. I think I paid like 1500 for everything. So I saved a little bit of money and I got the bed platform. And it's kind of cool because I would have never thought, you know, to put a storage in here. Got some wipes and you can put whatever else you need in there. Phone chargers. Comes with two cup holders, which is actually where our phone chargers are. And there you can see I have the remote for the mini split, the remote for the TV, and the remote for the DVD player. So it's a kind of cool setup. I got these lights here on each side, that one and that one, little LEDs. And one time is like a blue night light. Second time is on. Pretty cool little light. And the best thing about these little lights 
is they have a USB charger on them. So she has her own USB charger and I got my own USB charger. So we didn't have to run any additional wiring or anything like that back here so we could charge our phones right from the bed, you know, without having to put anything else back here. Give you a little back view, how everything looks. How it looks with the ramp open. All right, I guess I'll go back on the other side and kind of explain how I build these lights. All right, so the story kind of behind these lights is on my first car trailer, it had one light in the center in the back and one light in the center in the front. So I thought that's how this one was gonna come. However, this trailer came with one light right there where that corner light is. And the other light where that light is. And how the roof was already insulated and all that stuff, I didn't want to bring everything down to rerun the wiring. So I sat there scratching my head and I was like, well, it looked absolutely terrible. If I just have one light there and one light here. And I've kind of seen this in some of the higher end RVs kind of I really liked the way it looked. So I was like, ah, I really want something like that. And I just kept thinking and thinking. I'm like, well, I kind of make like some weird T shape. So I get the power from this light. And this actually is half inch MDF. And on the top, it has a one by two. And it gives strength to everything, brings it down. So you can get that little LED strip in there coming out. To give you that little like side glow look and by doing all that also I was able to make a channel where I could run all my wires to all the lights same thing on this one you kind of see up there the one by twos that I put so and here you can see a little bit of where that light used to be those are the little holes of where the light the original light was so you get the power that comes out of the roof right here and I connect this light, I run power to here, then it tees off to this one and that one. And it comes this way to that light, that light, and then it ends. And it also feeds the LED strip. And then I got these, these are like furniture screws. They're kind of nice. It was a nice big hex head. I was thinking about painting them white, but I kind of like the way they looked in black. Kind of gives it, you know, a different kind of look. And then in the roof, where all the bolts are, is where the steel is in the roof. So what I did was, uh, that was the hardest part of installing this whole light. I got my wife and my dad to hold the whole light up. And then I would screw, where I knew a beam was, I would put one screw, one hole here. And I'd start the hole in the ceiling. And then I put a rib nut into the steel beam. So that screw actually screws into the steel beam into a rib nut. So it's nice and secure and then we just went like that holding the light up. And once you get two and it can't move anywhere, then it kind of stays in place. And uh, that's pretty much it. Maybe I'll just do a quiet little walk around so you can see it one more time. There you can see the RS1 in the background in the container. All right, now I'll shoot a video of uh, putting everything up and how we drive. All right, so as far as putting everything away, to get loaded up, we're gonna lift the bed. You can see how it works there, it has like a chain that goes to the motor. Then that has a chain that crosses to over there. And that has a chain. And then here is the shaft that crosses to that side. And then it's set up over there. So the width is adjustable by this bar here. And then you can adjust either your frame and these are also 
we got like a one inch adjustment and there you can see how the lights clear Take it all the way up. And that is the brand right there. And also make sure the brake is on. I had it off one time and the bed will start coming down. All right, so next, be the sofa, we're gonna grab the pillows. there again this stove top will be put the way down there grab the bed put it up here grab that I 3d printed these little pieces here that have that groove that holds the rope nice because before as you can see right there the rope was kind of moving around and I'm starting to rub the bed here's the same thing I'm just snug it up and that's it and this was just a regular twin bed that I cut up a little bit because that is a slightly smaller than twin bed mattress I can't remember what size that was and I just mounted some hinges there to the wheel wells And before it had these supports that were here that I left them when I first built it but the car wouldn't fit in there so I had to take them off and I just got to touch up the paint on the bottom of the bed there next we'll get the chairs and the dining table folded. show you how the chairs sit in this little holder I made you can see it's got that notch for the chair there and I separate them all evenly so none of the chairs really bump together too much I mean they could probably still touch but it's better than nothing and I have yet to have a chair bounce out of there and that's pretty much it I'll show you why I really don't recommend the Raptor liner I guess the floor flexes from one sheet to the other so almost all the seams look like this where it cracks because apparently it's not a flexible coating so I was thinking about maybe doing like a bead of gray caulking across all the seams it's also kind of hard to clean you can see the tire tracks there I mean you could clean it if you get like the greaser and a scrubbing brush and sit there and scrub and scrub and scrub there you can see the tire marks too and there again where the seam is you can see the raptor liner cracking here i guess where they cocked all the corners of the wheel well it's not a flexible coating so whatever touches that caulking and the caulking moves will crack right off there you can see it again i mean it does work and it looks nice but again this is after using it for a year and a half also so That's pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, anything, uh, leave them in the comments. Uh, if any other videos you would like to see, maybe something more specific, uh, I'm pretty sure. I think everything's pretty easy because I built it, but you know, everybody else just seeing a quick video thinks some other stuff. So if you could think of anything, you could put it in the comments. Um, if you can, like and subscribe. I'll keep the videos coming. We'll do some more how-tos. 
Another thing I realized I never mentioned was uh, how I got power to the TV and all the stuff. So I'll go over it real quick. Again, all the power and stuff like that comes from this area here. So all the power runs up the back of the refrigerator for the TV. And I got that little track that they have in Home Depot. And I just ran that up against the top. And there you can see the outlet and all the electrical connections for the TV. For the mini split, the mini split you can run the, the hoses out of each side, the left to the right, or I believe you could even run them out of the top. So they come out of the right side and you really can't even tell that they're in there. And they go in there and then down the wall to the unit. Here next to the dining room table, I also have an outlet. It has two USBs so you can charge the phones on the table or whatever you need to do. And this is the power switch for the inverter. Now I'll actually show you how it works. So as you can see here, the refrigerator is off. I like the black inside. I don't think I ever showed the inside either of the refrigerator. And also there's no freezer. I found having a freezer um, kind of just a waste of space. Even though sometimes I wish we could take ice cream. But really it's just a waste of space. I think a bigger refrigerator was better for us. It has great organization for the cans and stuff like that. All these shelves are adjustable to whatever you need. Uh, the other nice thing about this refrigerator, it has a lock. So you could lock it while you're traveling. The only thing I have found out is that the lock does have a little bit of play. I mean, I guess it's a lock for somebody not to take your food or whatever. So it does have a little bit of play. So if you have a water bottle in there and it falls, it could crack open and it'll stay on and it'll get all frosty inside. So I'm planning on maybe making something that goes on here or bending that lock tab so it's a tighter fit so it can't move at all but there you can see it's off I'll show you come over here turn the inverter on and it just cycled on and there's a nice LED light it comes with that's a whole fridge so now if I was to connect to shore power the second I connect to shore power it would automatically transfer over to shore power because that's the preferred feed and another thing of how I ran wiring for those floodlights and for the bed and everything, but you can see some of the bed wire up there that I just tie wrapped to the top of the bed rails. I got this piece of one by four and I 45 each side. So my 12 volts for all this comes from, again, from here and it goes up this cabinet along there goes up the wall over over the door along this wall along this wall and then it goes in that trough all the wiring for the outside for the lights and for the rear bed so it was just you know a little problem I didn't want to take again I didn't want to take any of the panels off or anything like that because it was all caulked and finished nicely so I came up with this idea it doesn't look bad I probably if I don't tell nobody they probably wouldn't even know that's that's what I was there for so that's pretty much it if you guys have any other comments concerns or questions or suggestions let me know in the comments if you could like and subscribe I plan on doing more how-to videos uh, maybe I'll do a how-to video of how I did the epoxy countertops. I gotta redo uh, one of my bathrooms, so maybe I'll make it for in there. Or if you guys have any other questions on how to do something, just let me know. And if it's a uh, easy video to make, I can make one for you and help you guys out. All right, thank you guys. One thing I did forget to mention about the whole refrigerator inverter setup is on a Group 27 deep cycle battery, the refrigerator will stay running all day long. Um, and my bolts would drop probably to like 12.2, 12.1, something like that, not crazy low. And that's, you know, running on the inverter for eight or nine hours. So at night, when you turn the generator off for the AC and take a shower and stuff like that, the whole night the batteries will get charged back up. And that's with the solar panel, the 40 watt solar panel, you know, it helps keep the battery maintained and stuff like that. So just thought I'd add that because I think I completely forgot to add how long it will run for and also when you're driving uh, have it where the tow vehicle is charging the battery the whole time anyways so that helps when you're driving also